Coolant plays an essential role in CNC machining, especially when working with aluminum alloys. It can cool the cutting tool, push the chips away, and lead to a better surface finish. In today's video, we'll be learning how to mix makeup coolant for our Haas CNC milling machine and test the coolant concentration. Let's review the lesson objectives. By the end of this video, students will be able to interpret and understand a coolant manufacturer data sheet, mix coolant in the proper proportions using the proper technique, measure the coolant concentration using a portable refractometer, start by filling a bucket with filtered, distilled, or deionized water. Under no circumstances should you ever use tap water in a CNC milling machine. The minerals in tap water can cause severe rust and damage to precision machine and tooling surfaces. Next, we'll pour our coolant concentrate into a measuring cup, being careful not to spill. Here, we're using Trim Microsol 585 XT from the Master Chemical Corporation. It's an excellent coolant for most machining operations and can last years while keeping the machine clean. The specific amount to pour depends upon the manufacturer's concentration recommendations. Let's take a look at the data sheet. The recommended concentration for moderate duty machining is 7 to 10 percent. We have added about 8 ounces of concentrate to about 2 gallons or 256 ounces of water, resulting in a concentration of about 3 percent. Typically, when mixing makeup coolant, we create a mix of between 2 and 4 percent to maintain the proper concentration in the machine. This is because over time, it's really just the water that evaporates from the machine, along with some coolant residue carried out on chips. Never add only straight water to the machine, since it won't find enough free coolant molecules to bond with, leading to rust issues. Slowly add the concentrate to the water following the acronym OIL, O-I-L, meaning oil in last. Never add water to the concentrate as it will not properly mix. Pour the concentrate slowly while stirring to ensure a consistent solution. Here, we're using a piece of scrap aluminum with various size holes, which works very well for mixing. Pour the coolant mixture straight in through the door of the machine, taking care to avoid splashing. Now, let's see how to measure the coolant concentration. We'll use a tool called a portable refractometer. The case includes droppers for collecting a coolant sample. Adjust the flow control valve to about a 45 degree angle to provide a slow flow rate. Turn on the coolant from the control panel and let it run for a few minutes to mix in the machine before taking a sample. Use the dropper to collect a sample of coolant. Place a few drops on the lens surface of the refractometer and close the diffuser plate. Give it a few taps to ensure uniform coverage without air bubbles. Hold the refractometer with the eyepiece to your eye underneath a ceiling light. Okay. Notice the blue and white colors across the gradient scale. Where you see the separation between blue and white colors, that's the coolant concentration. Here, we read about 7%. Make a note of your reading. Referring back to the data sheet, we see that the manufacturer indicates a refractive factor of 1.2. What that means is the actual concentration is 20% higher than the measurement we read from the refractometer. So, if we take our 7% reading and multiply by 1.2, we find that our actual coolant concentration is about 8.4%, which is in the zone for our machining operations. Improper coolant concentrations can lead to issues such as foaming, so it's important to stay within the recommended range. Before putting away the refractometer, we need to clean it in the DI water. A small stream is all that's needed. 
Do not submerge the instrument. Be sure to rinse the diffuser plate as well. Flush the dropper several times with DI water to clean out the coolant mixture. Gently use an air gun to dry the refractometer. Using a towel can scratch the lens. Um, we're rolling. Place the refractometer back in its case and return it to its storage location. When mixed, tested, and replenished properly, machine coolant has the potential of lasting through several years of trouble-free operation. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.